of your precious time to be with us this evening. And I'm just, I'm glad to be here and I'm glad that you Let us bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we come at this hour today. And as we come, we come so grateful and thankful that you brought us all together here another time. And as we come, we ask that you would consider the work that we are trying to do. We are trying to do things in our community that will better our brothers and sisters' lives. And if we haven't done all that you wanted us to do, please forgive us and help us in the future that we may do greater things. And we ask the blessing upon all of those who attend today. Bless their families and all of the many things that they have to go through. And as we travel from day to day, we have to make us better people, loving one another and caring for each other. Bless our city of New Orleans that's going through a great revolution. We ask you to just please fix things that have to be fixed. Help us to fix what we can fix. And we ask you to all the Jesus name we serve. First of all, we'd like to thank the Marionite Order of the Nuns for allowing us to have this program here today and also for their help in helping the underprivileged and the poor around the world. There are many unsung heroes in the state of Louisiana. When we opened up the nominations to the leaders of our A Community Voice, there was a flood of nominations. We could not contact all of them, and we'll have to do this again next year to get a full list. That is because there are a lot of really great people here. They do little and big things to help our communities go forward. Some measure wealth by the assets one possesses. But these heroes' wealth is determined by the unmeasurable contributions they give to our communities. It makes a world of difference in our everyday lives. You rescue us in a loving, timeless, and selfless manner. Thank yous are not always enough. So today, we give you special thanks, hugs, Kisses and awards. You are the real leaders of our city, and we appreciate what you do every day, common and uncommon actions for the people. Never tired of the road you travel to help people in need. One million kudos, jobs well done. So to introduce you now to our unsung heroes, we are going to open it up and ask our first one to come forward and tell us what they believe in or how they have been able to do it. Just give us a little rundown of your story. We're going to open up with Dr. Miller Lewis. Thank you very much. My dear sister, thank you very much. <coughs> My dear sister who recited that opening prayer and invocation, I'm Elliot Willard, I'm here today with my wife, Mary Jane Willard. We're here simply as parents of Cynthia Willard Lewis. Cynthia is now confined to the hospital. And I ask you to 
join in with my family and uh, many friends and praying for our wealth and well and health and well-being. Only God knows what the future holds. Amen. She has been in intensive care. But we believe in miracles. The recitation of that first prayer is reminding me of what the good Lord can do. We believe. You've got to believe. It's difficult, but I know all of you have experienced some kind of difficulty. But mama, the daddy, aunt, cousin, cousin, children. Somewhere along the way, it comes. But as long as we know there's a God upstairs, no matter how difficult the condition is, it can be remedied to the fullest extent. Annie and I, former school board employees of 100 years, 57 years for me, 43 years for her. My greatest award is to know that tonight I'm going to Joseph S. Clark graduation ceremony of a class reunion. And for 50 years ago, I taught those kids and I will be speaking to them. That's my great reward. And I'm glad somewhere in my family started off with my grandfather, a Harvard man, who happened to be the first preacher at Old Baptist Church on 3rd and Loyola, uptown section of the city. Always placed emphasis on doing for us. And that's one of the reasons why I thank you for having me here today. Cynthia Willard Lewis. I thank you because she, through the traits of the hereditary condition that exists from my granddad, Joseph Willard, all the way down to Cynthia's time, she's a giver. And I'll be honest with you, a lot of us know what politics is all about. When I was on the school board, back in 80. I said, Cynthia, you're an education major. Let's go into one of the classrooms for one year, and at the end of that year, you will be a principal. No problem with the test, because her score on the national teacher examination was almost perfect. Mr. Kahneman, I didn't have that kind of mind, but she did, thank God. But you know what she told me? Daddy, I don't want to accept that offer. I want to work with Fortier High School for one half year, and then I'll go join Bob Tucker, Emmy Moten, and Terry Stiverny by working for Moon Land. I want to give, and I'm happy that way. And she has been that side, never emphasizing the need for money. Let me tell you, we have 12 children. That lady over there has 12 and never complained about it. And for some reason or another, we've never had a serious problem with finances. We were able to always support each other in spirit, in finances, in property, in travel, and just support. If you love, if you give that love, if you share that spirit, if you want to do good for others, if you keep that smile going, if you always want to help somebody, like the philosophy of many people who have lived before us, not just the saints, but a lot of historians too, if you keep that spirit going, God will keep you going. And money... Lord knows, Cynthia never really made big money. But she had a big heart. 
and God has blessed us for it because she owns what the rest of us own, a car, a home, a family. All that I'm trying to say to you, let us focus on doing good for others, making life a service because we were created to help and we're only going to be here a short while. And Lord knows, I hope Cynthia's position is not a short while. But with prayers, we're going to bring her back. I hope, I pray, and I know it because I believe in miracles. And I've seen miracles before over and over again. So I'm asking you, pray for her. And I'm saying to you, I thank you. And I'm saying to you, continue your good work. This community needs you now more than any other period in our history. Keep your love going. Keep your spirit going. Keep your meanness down. Keep your jealousy down. Keep your hand in the other's hand and hold each other up. And God will be pleased with you. And your spirit will live on.